All right. Well, actually, a third video now about uh, the, these middleware developments or interactions. Well, this is not really middleware. It's just we, we have the player working with the new input system or the moves in this case. We have the weather working so we can skip time until morning. Uh, <laughs> but one thing I, I actually think we, is really important for, I guess, any game. Picking up my controller. Moose is there. And now the moose is gone. Well, that's a problem, right? Sure, maybe some smart people, they can figure out how to control it back in. But definitely, yeah, it's a problem. And uh, to fix that, Unity already has uh, something amazing. And uh, today I'm just going to add Cinemachine to the moose so you can see how that's working. So there are, there are a couple of different ways. Uh, you can just right click uh, Cinemachine and that's what we're doing today. And there are different camera types. Uh, there's only a few cameras I would ever use. 2D camera if I'm doing something uh, like a 2D platform or 2D game in general. Virtual camera is a not really a camera it's if i make cutscenes i might have multiple of these i switch between but the one i prefer is this one a free look camera and you can already see the game is like oh what and if we look at the main camera you can see a component has been added up here this one cinema scene brain don't really have to touch that uh, until you want to really fine tune how it's working. What you want to touch is this extra asset they added. Save during gameplay. Yes, it's really simple. So, so the first thing we want to do is basically to take the player and attach it uh, to uh, follow. And if we go to scene, we can see the camera is out here somewhere. So let's just uh, zero these positions in or move them. Can't. Why is that? Well, the way it works, it also needs something to look at. So we can uh, make it look at the moves. Oh, it's really close. Uh, you still want to adjust, uh, but somehow you can't. That's because Cinemachine is taking control of everything that's going on on this game object. So that's why it's important to keep it uh, on its own. But it's really nice, you can control stuff like field of view, so remember there's different different fields of view, right? There's horizontal and vertical, and uh, it's important what you choose. Uh, but the ones you really want to look at is these axes, so you can see. Oh, that's not nice. Speed is the control, how fast it takes input. But one thing uh, that's really important, since we already, in the last two videos, talking about the new input system, it needs to know how is it receiving input. And you can see there is this, it's not really a warning, it's just an information. Add input provider, just click it. Now we're done. Now it accepts input from the new input system, which means I can use my keyboard and mouse or controller or whatever I feel like using. And then we have the basic camera set up here. Still everything like FX or post, whatever, you still do that on the camera. The only thing you do here is to control the camera rig. Um, if we go to scene. Uh, I like to have this one on called save during gameplay because this allows me to make modifications during game. So I'm just going to hit the lock up here. I'm going to save the scene and I'm going to hit play because then I'll make my adjustments uh, at game time. And see, it's already moving. I'm not touching anything. And that's just a camera rig. Uh, so now I'm touching it with my mouse. If I let go of my mouse, I take my controller. Yes. Well, there we go. We already have a almost functioning 
thing, right? So now we can lay down, look at the sky, see it all change. Well, right now it's set to skip to morning immediately. But it's really, it's really close, right? It's really alive. So, so one, some of the things you can adjust. If we enable gizmos, you can see you have these three rings. If we scroll to the bottom here, you can see we have top ring. That's the top ring represented up here. Same for middle and bottom. You can see you also have different options to do different things when working here. Right? But here we determine how high is the top rig up. So if we adjust, you can see. And it doesn't have to be top rig. You can put this low if you want to, or really high. What's really relevant is the radius. So, so think about what our players used to when playing games with this type of view. They used to, when they go up, you, you could also go far away. So I want to adjust the radius to be a lot larger. And I can just do it here, right? So, top rig. Click the button, then I can adjust. Is this a good range or is it like this we want? I think this is good. Do we want to look from behind or like this? Oh, no. Sometimes you just want to go up. Middle rig, so if we click the middle rig, here we go. A bit over the shoulder, further back, there we go. Also looks like we have some sort of offset on. It's like, it's a bit off to the side. We can adjust that later. Bottom rig. For any reason you might to be at the bottom, imagine if we're eating, laying down, whatever. All the way down or just a bit up, distance as well. Maybe like this, nice. <clears throat> and then we have these uh, acceleration times because you noticed when I'm touching uh, the input, let's uh, activate the scene. It's kind of... Oh, 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 oh. That's based on this acceleration time. So let's just uh, increase those to 0.5 here. Same on this side. It's still fast, but it's more smooth. Feels better. It's not so chunky. Then we can adjust uh, these values. These are also the ones you might consider moving into the options system. Uh, speed which basically translates into uh, sensitivity, right? So if we take that all the way down to one. <laughs> okay, let's try that. I I'm turning to the side. We can also see the numbers are increasing, but uh, maybe one is, is not really what we want. So. 300 was fast, 150 maybe. Uh, it's fast when you're on the lower rig, but it's not so fast when you're on the middle or the top rig. Things to consider, we might change the value depending on what rig type we're using. Mm, one thing I like to add as well is if we go out and remember, because we have this checked, it's saved. We don't have to worry about saving uh, the values now. At the bottom, you can see it's added this input provider. I didn't add that. It did it on its own when we clicked the bottom up here. Let's ignore that for now. It has these extensions. And these are really good. Uh, third person aim is like if you're building a shooter and you, when you aim, it, it closes up, right? But one I use often is collider. And I want to make sure when the camera collides with something, it's not going through like clipping where you can see halfway through a wall. And this is what this helps with. So, so we select what we are colliding with, uh, in this case, just default, right? And minimum distance, ignore that. Avoid obstacles, yes please. Distance limit, let's put that at uh, 0.5.
occlusion time, you might want to keep this very low. Uh, because that's the time it's going to push the camera away. Uh, camera radius, I'm just going to make that very high, right? Because this determines how big uh, the camera really is. High, 0.5, but that is high. And this is the strategy. What should happen when we're colliding? Should it pull the camera closer? Should it uh, move it up or, or move it away? And you basically select here what we want. Uh, right now we just pull camera forward, which means if we put the camera towards the floor, it will zoom in as long as it's on the floor. And let's add some smoothing to that so it's not instantly. Uh, let's add something. 3D object, cube, somewhere, move to view, good, and let's uncheck that, make sure the cube is on the default layer so it can collide with the camera, let's hit play. Make sure we're in the right view, right? So you can see when the camera comes close to the cube, so we should hit it by now, right? You can see it's right there on the left. It's being pulled forward. It's not me. I'm just moving to the side. Duke, there we go. And you can see when we, we come to this long side, how it's following. Same with the floor, but of course now we have raised the lower rig, so it should never hit the floor, in theory. But no game is flat like this, or some games are, but if you have some sort of terrain with variety, when you're going downhill and the camera is behind on the lower rig, it will uh, jump and sometimes clip through the ground, and that's just annoying or game breaking. <coughs> anyway, there we go. We got a moose set up on the new input system with a camera rig. Let's just run close to see what it does. Whoop, it just zooms into the animal. We can jump, attack all of this, and even in a, a new function. Yep. Skip till morning. There we go. Super easy. Super easy. So so what really takes a lot of time is defining, fine-tuning, make sure it works in all these different things, uh, very complex scenes you set up yourself, right? Sometimes it will fail because maybe there is a layer we didn't think about, we add some sort of prefab from a asset pack that has a different layer by default, we need to remember to check all of these things before using them, otherwise we'll just end up with bugs. Short video on Cinemachine using Malbots as well, again, it's really nice asset. Thanks for watching guys, comment, rate, subscribe. Let me know if you have other ideas, comments below. See you next time.